Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and this is a first look at the new Neon and Glow tool that's uh, coming really soon. The, uh, the beta is out and so I just got sent that and was told I could go ahead and release content. So I thought I'd give you a first look at this. Having said that, uh, I just mentioned it's in beta so I do want to point out because it's in beta, you know what that means, right? Things may change. When it comes out, things may look slightly different. Uh, different, they may work slightly differently, things like that. So just keep that in mind. This is a first look and a good preview of what's coming, but it doesn't mean it's going to be exactly like that when it's ready. But I doubt it'll be uh, much different, maybe just a little bit. So let's take a look at it. Um, here's a portrait that I took. And if you go down into the creative section, Neon and Glow is down there. Now, to be clear, Neon and Glow is one tool with two different options the Neon option or the Glow option. And yes, you can use both on the same photo. I'll show you uh, how they each work. I'm not going to use both on this photo at the same time, but you can do that. So just to be aware. Now, what it does is it will automatically identify the main subject of your photo. And in Neon, let's say I'm over on the Neon tab. That's one thing I hope they change. It's hard to tell that I'm on Neon versus Glow. It's slightly uh, in bold, the term, but it's kind of hard to see. So hopefully they adjust that. But Bottom line is, as you can see, it automatically apply. I'm on neon. Um, it automatically applies a neon outline around your subject. Now you can refine that, add to it, erase from it, things like that by clicking on refine object. So click on refine object. You can draw, erase, or restore. Uh, let's say I want to erase. There's this little section down here where it added that little, uh, well, just that little circle, if you will. I don't want that, so I'm going to click erase. And when I come over here, I'm going to make my brush a little smaller. My first thought was I would need to erase on the line that I'm trying to get rid of, but that's actually not it. It's actually when I click to start erasing, I'm holding over here outside of that on purpose. You can see it's identified the subject. And honestly, that's like a, essentially a hundred percent perfect identification of the subject. Uh, you know, this, this gentleman here. Um, but you see, there's a little red dot inside that circle that I want to get rid of. That's all you have to erase. Just erase that tiny dot. You don't have to trace around. You just, uh, just basically erase the dot. So I'm going to come over here, erase that dot. And when I let go, it's gone. So now my outline is perfect just around my subject. So just keep that in mind. You can use the refine object and you've got settings here, that sort of thing. But you can use that to, of course, refine the object, which is your subject. So amount, I've got it at 68, 70, 75, whatever here. Thickness is going to be how thick is the outline itself, right? So that's flexible and adjustable. And then indent is going to give you more space between your subject and the line itself. And so that's what indent does. And then down at the bottom, you've got this style section where you can basically customize the look of this neon outline. So spread, let me just take that down and you will see it's it's getting uh, thinner, if you will. And when I drag it to the right, it's getting a bit more pop and it's getting, and I'm going to use the word glow, not to confuse you with the glow tab, which we're going to get to in a second, but it creates a little bit of a glow, a little bit of a halo almost around the edges as I increase the spread. You can see that it's kind of glowing more, but I'm trying to think of another word for it, a little bit of a halo, uh, but that's what spread does. Atmosphere is really fun. Now that creates a more diffused, even kind of bigger, but kind of softer, more diffused kind of spread, uh, glow, halo. I got to come up with better terms here. Feel free to give me suggestions. But um, as I drag that, it's creating more of that kind of hazy glow. And as I take it to the left, it's going away. So you have that customization ability, which I think is really nice. Now, hue, of course, as you can uh, probably quite obviously tell, is going to adjust the actual color hue of the uh, the neon that we're applying. So you can just roll that to find something that you like. I'm going to leave it back over here kind of in the blue where it was. And then whiteness is, if I drag that to the right, you'll see it's becoming more white, of course. And if I drag it to the left, it's becoming a little bit bluer and cooler. And so pretty easy to use and certainly very quick. But before and after, something you can do for portraits, you can use it on lots of different things. Um, I can see this being used for cyberpunk kind of things, maybe some cityscapes where you're doing something like that. And of course, some kind of creative, fun uh, type of portrait work. So having done that, that is neon. I'm going to reset all that and I'm now going to click on glow. 
You do see the masking tab. The masking tab looks the same as masking tab in other tools. So you do have the ability to come in and do masking. Now, when you get to glow, you've got two choices. You've got inner and outer. Uh, I'll, I'll look and touch on both. Inner is I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull this up. You're going to see it's actually creating a glow on the subject. That's the inner. It's identified the same subject or object in this case. And as you can see, uh, let me just, uh, let's see, I'll just draw down here. You can see I can draw, but as I draw, not only is that showing up there where I drew, but you can see that my subject has been well identified. But now that I've done that, I've got this glow showing up here. So I'm going to erase that just to get rid of it because I don't need or want that. And I don't want that little spot there either. You can see it's doing the exact same here on glow as it did on neon in terms of identifying the object or subject. So that's inner uh, amount is 60. I can roll the hue so I can cool him off if I'd like to. I can make him kind of purple pink. That's the hue. Uh, whiteness works the same as it does on the neon tool where you can make it bluer or a little bit wider. So I can go a little bit wider with a, a subtle blue kind of hue here and really dial in the look of the photo. Brightness is, of course, going to make him brighter or darker. So that's, that's a nice way to isolate your subject and give a nice little pop of a light there. And then contrast, of course, is affecting that. Just keep in mind, these adjustments are happening just on what's identified and or added or subtracted to or from by you with the Refine Object tool. So it's just happening in that area. And then there's one other fun little thing here, and that's sparkles. And this is something you can just drag to the right. And you can see it's basically just creating these sparkles, kind of a fairy dust, let's call it, um, around your subject and kind of on your subject. And spread is just going to create a bigger, more fairy dust looking kind of experience. Again, this would be like a uh, kind of futuristic cyberpunk kind of portrait kind of look. This is not something I would really use on landscapes or cityscapes, of course. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty fun, to be honest. And of course, you can change the hue of it. So you can dial in that color tone to match uh, whatever you're doing in your photo. So there it is before and after. Just kind of a fun, quick thing to play with. Neon and Glow is coming soon. I think it's in about two weeks. I'm not exactly sure of the uh, exact date. But I want to show you on one more photo real quick. I almost forgot. I need to show you the outer here on the glow. So we did inner already. So you know how that works and that sort of thing. Outer is, of course, just the opposite. It's working outside the frame of the object that's been identified and or refined by you. So for outer, you just click on that tab, go to amount, and you can see how it's adding this glow essentially outside the frame. You can increase the size and, of course, the hue. You've got all the same controls as you would have elsewhere. So this is where I feel like the glow really kind of comes to life because you can add this glow essentially outside of your subject and you can create this interesting kind of look. And of course you have sparkles and whiteness and hue and all that kind of stuff as well that you can adjust. But outer is essentially outside of the, uh, the item or object that's been masked, whereas inner is essentially on the inside. So you can combine those in different ways to get the best possible outcome and look in your photo. Just wanted to point out that you have the inner and outer on glow. But remember, on neon, it's just a traced outline, so there's not an inner or outer. It's just essentially an outline. Okay, now let's hop into that other photo. Okay, I've got this photo, which of course has some neon in it, which is a, a fun use of this tool. And by the way, if you don't have Luminar Neo yet, there's a link down below. It's an affiliate link. They pay me a referral commission if you buy, buy off of that. Uh, saves you some money with my coupon code, but it also uh, provides me some free support. Uh, and I'm here every week making videos about Luminar, so you get free training in return. Uh, this is the original photo. I did some edits, quite a few edits, uh, honestly. The photo looks like that, but this is where an example of where I'd come into Neon and Glow. And I would not use Neon here because, as you saw, it actually traces around things. Um, with that neon line. I don't really think I would use that in a photo, but I might would use the glow. So I'd come in here and just drag the amount and I'll go pretty high so you can see it well. So it's it's been applied, but the hue is off. So I want to adjust that hue to be more blue. That's going to line up better with kind of the sign here. And I'm going to click on refine object and draw. And what I want to do is paint over some of the areas that it's missed. It didn't get the entire sign and it did not get the... Um, uh, the car 
uh, in its entirety either, but I think both look pretty nice with a little bit of more uh, kind of this glow on them. So there's the car, and while I'm at it, I think I'm gonna shrink my brush and add a little bit to some of these neon signs over here just to give them a little bit of pop. So I'm just painting over that, and I'm gonna go back uh, to the main section here on inner, and I do need to pull that down a little bit. It's pretty intense, uh, and the blue is slightly messing up the color of the car, so I think I might pull that down just a little bit. And this is an instance where you actually may want to use, if you need different colors, you would just need to use this tool twice, because you know you can do that in Luminar. Use the tool, you know, paint it into the proper areas, close it, open it again a second time, use a tool, get a different color if you need to, paint it into somewhere else in the photo, things like that. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm sure you're aware of how that works. Whiteness here, maybe I'll go a little bit whiter, maybe a slight bit brighter. And if you look at the before, there it is, and the after, there it is. It's a little too much. I've got it pretty high here and pretty bright and pretty white, but the point is you can make neon signs. And so this is where I was saying, I would use this on cityscapes and I'd mentioned cyberpunk kind of looks, but also just, this is Americana. This is Route 66 in New Mexico. And all I did is I took the neon and the car and took them from that to that. A little bit of pop, a little bit of glow coming off the neon, which I think gives it a nice mood. So that's an example of how you can use this tool. Again, it's coming soon somewhere, I think in the next two weeks. If you have questions, leave them down below. I'll be back soon with more Luminar videos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you soon, and until next time, adios.